be nice if every receptacle had a place where you could plug in a cord to charge your phone. This is an upgrade that you can do. It's super easy. This one took me about 10 minutes to do. Right now I'm going to show you the complete guide on how to install it. My name is David and this is the USB outlet by Ellie Grip, I think is how you pronounce it. I really like this one because it's very affordable and it has two USB-A and one USB-C slot. So you have a very versatile receptacle when you're finished. Now I'm gonna be doing this thing live because I do not wanna go find the breaker. It's just one receptacle, I can do it. But if you are not comfortable with that, feel free to use a tool and turn off your breaker. This here, what I'm using is a five in one and box cutter that I absolutely love. I've been using this thing for a long time now. It is clutch. The next tool that I love to do with these kind of jobs is one of these electric screwdrivers. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of them. This is where they really shine on jobs like this where you don't need a ton of torque, but you've got a few really long screws like these ones here that go into the top and bottom of the receptacle. It's also helpful because they have a light on the end of this. And if you are gonna turn the power off, with you if you're, which if you're not familiar with how to replace a receptacle, you should be turning the power off. Light is just going to help you guide your screwdriver to the slot because they are pretty much all slotted screws on the old ones. Now we've got some wires that are backstabbed into the back of the receptacle here. And you, what you need to do is hold on to the wire and then shake the receptacle back and forth. It was hard to get a good angle on it, but you just do a twisting motion and kind of keep pressure back on the wire and the wire will just come right out. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, you could always just cut the wire and restrip it. On this one, there is also a ground wire that's under a screw. It's sort of with the shepherd's hook on the uh, screw, which is basically just a loop that goes around it. And so you need to kind of bend it and pull it out. You could also, it's sometimes quicker just to cut it out. There are no other receptacles on this downstream. So we only have three wires coming out of the box. If you have a GFCI receptacle, this one is not going to be the replacement for it. If it's going downstream to another receptacle, you'll need to use a GFCI replacement, which I'll show you at the end one that you can get. I really like this particular one because you don't have to use those shepherd's hooks on any of the wires. You actually need to just bend them straight and leave about a half inch of wire or so. And that wire is going to just go straight under a flat plate. Now there's a couple ways to remember which colors go under which screw. White goes to light because it's just right. Black goes to gold or so I've been told. Green to ground because the world is round. Now even though the world is round, <laughs> this particular wire is a bare wire. And bare means it's just solid copper, even though it has a little bit of paint on it. It's actually just a regular wire with no insulation. That's going to be our green wire. Technically, some wires have green insulation. Some of them are bare wire. It's the same thing. When you put all of these screws under, even with the electric screwdriver, you're going to want to give them a tug with uh, your hand to make sure they're really secure in there and give it an extra turn without the motor on the electric screwdriver just to make sure. Now here on this one, I am stripping a teensy tiny bit of wire off because you wanna have the wire fully inserted under the screw terminal, making a solid connection. So if you have a little bit of insulation, you wanna make sure to uh, <laughs> peel that out. That was me getting a little bit of a shock there on the other side, but it's okay. I've already got uh, enough shocks in my uh, under my belt to know what to expect on those. And uh, if you have a metal box, if you're working in a commercial setting, you'd probably wanna tape these wires, but uh, this is a plastic box inside of a residential home. So you don't need to tape the wires. It's just plastic all inside of there. There's nothing for it to really ground out against. And uh, you got some really long screws here that the screwdriver is really going to come in clutch, helping to get these things all the way tight. Another thing to note at this point is uh, you want to make sure the receptacle is centered in between the box. That way your plate is going to cover up any openings. And there's a little bit of play on receptacles. You'll see when you open it up on either side, you've got about oh, a quarter inch or so where you can tilt it back and forth. Now this one here, uh, one of the things I don't like about this particular product is the wall plate is extremely small. So if you're going over an existing wall plate, it may not fit. I had a feeling that that was gonna be the case on this one. So I went ahead and got a oversized wall plate, which is totally fine to do. It just helps to cover things up until the paint is completed in this home. The wall plate comes with two new screws in a tiny little baggie 
that you need to take out. I was just checking here to make sure it's going to cover up the majority of where the old wall plate was because on these square receptacles, you're not going to be able to use the round plate that was there. So it's always good to just have a backup plan or you could, you know, scrape it and do some touch up paint around it if you wanted to. I think this one is going to get remodeled at some point. So I just wanted to go ahead and cover it up for now and then we can go back and paint it later. If you've gotten this far in, you know we are just about done here. Uh, some people like to line the screws up on these plates, up, down, left, right. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't serve any practical purpose. I do recommend it checking the circuit and making sure that you have your correct ground and wires in place. If you do, it should look like that. Two greens and no red. Now here we can plug in a USB-C port here just to check and make sure that the charging function is working. There we go. We've got fast charging available. Not super fast charging, but it's good enough for what this is going to be. It's a uh, picture frame that they wanted to plug in back here. Previously, the power adapter was just too uh, wide and they couldn't get the cabinet to push all the way back. But now it looks really good and super flush. I even got a little USB right angle adapter, but it's not here yet. That will help get it even closer to the wall. You can do this with a GFCI in like a bathroom or a kitchen as well. They make some like this. I think these devices are absolutely great.